All right, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Rick Cleveland, and uh, we are Ho Chunk Station singers. Then my uh, sons, the Bear Clan uh, singers and dancers, they're going to be uh, dancing here, and we're going to be doing the morning show, the opening, the Freeland Film Festival. It is all over the world. So hello and aho and uh, and uh, all the other good words like that. You know how to say good morning, Heine P. I mean, wash day, all the other good ones. And uh, my, the first dance we're gonna do is the, is the uh, grand entry song. It's like a welcome song to welcome other tribes into our to our circle, into our village. And uh, we, we dance with one another to, to honor Mother Earth. And the drum, they're gonna be singing. And that's supposed to represent uh, God's voice. And we, we pay a lot of homage to a lot of different, different uh, things that of, of Mother Nature. That. So we're going to be doing, doing, doing this dance here so we can uh, enjoy the, the Ho-Chunk uh, Grand Entry uh, Ho-Chunk Welcome Song. So go ahead, boys. Go ahead. <laughs> one dance after another I have to explain a little bit. There's a lot of stories to the to the dances that we have. Some stories last can last two, three years, some stories tell it ten minutes, some stories they last a long time. But I have to try to abbreviate all of our stories here to our dances. And the first one that we're gonna have dance is our uh, men's traditional. And these are our, our old warriors like back in the old days these would these guys wouldn't go full uh, fight war. They were when they're in their young And their regalia that they have on, and I'm gonna step out of the way for a little bit. And I'll explain it. Standing here, and my my grandson uh, Levi, he's gonna be dancing this um, men's traditional dance. He'll be standing here in front, of right where I'm standing, and he's gonna come uh, show you his regalia, and then he's and he's gonna turn around here and there, and then show you the bags and sides like that. And I'll, and I'll be explaining the dance. Uh, the front that you see has the, uh, the bone breastplate. And those those there were used for for protection back in the old days. And then and then uh, the beadwork that he has on. We didn't have beadwork back in the old days, but now that we do, when the, uh, the non-natives came to America, they traded beads with us, so we, we started using beadwork. But back in the old days, we would use our, our family colors, designs, and uh, those kind of things. So each each one of those it, we used to be uh, fully rigged up with uh, protection, like almost like armor. And this here, out of the feathers that are hanging off, each one represents a kill. 
and then uh, and then the eagle feather. Those those are uh, eagles fly the highest, so those are our messenger to uh, for our people when we pray, make our prayers, and we light a fire and, and burn cedar or tobacco, and then uh, we make our prayers that way. So so uh, and then on the back that that he has on his back, it's called uh, a bustle. Those ones there represent each kill, and like and then uh. And then uh, these feathers here are uh, young, immature eagle. And each one of those, when uh, when you're old, you get those like that. Not too many people have these. Not even sometimes one person don't even get them in their lifetime. But you see that he was a brave warrior back back in his day. So they so they give them to him like that. Then he has a porcupine roach and, uh, and the feathers on his head. And then uh, he, his his uh, term is done being a young warrior. So his feathers get to spin freely, kind of like retirement. So that's what they're going to be doing. So. We're gonna do show you the uh, menstrual dance and then the sneak up. So. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for watching him dance. That is my grandson, Levi, the men's traditional. Next, we have the women's traditional. And my, my wife, she's going to come over here and show you the women's ho chunk, applique, scrub, and all that. She's going to stand here, and then I'm going to explain her regalia. And uh, the ho chunk, the ho chunk people, they, they like, uh, uh, they're woodland people. And then you see all the woodland designs on her, the flowers and the applique. And then uh, and here, you know, where we live, they have the four seasons, so they have all the different colors of the leaves, and uh, there's the rainbow, so we have all that. And then, um, and then she has these uh, bones on her neck, and those there, back in the old days, the enemy would come try to steal that woman. They would try to uh, try to kill them, and then those, and then when they wear a lot of, lot of um, bones, and then those bones would uh, keep them from slitting their throats back in the old days. So turn around, and then she has, and then, uh, they usually wear a, a thing called a paste. Then uh, on that, turn, you turn around, please. Thank you. And then um, when they have that, then they would have their family designs, and their grandmother would uh, pass them down, and then uh, and show all our colors. So, and then uh, and then uh, this time here, she didn't wear hers today, and it's kind of raining out. And then these things are, are worth a lot of money, so we don't want to kind of wreck wreck that. But this time here, she she did that and brought her uh, brought her. Uh, the regalia that she has on, she has fully beaded moccasins, and uh, we usually don't have fully beaded moccasins for women, but this time here we do. And then, uh, and they usually wear uh, like a flap on the moccasin, and in the winter time they would they would flip it up, and then they would wrap it around their legs, kind of like a uh, like a poot, like so. But anyway, she's gonna do a woman scrub. And then uh, back in the old days, the 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 ladies like this when they dress this way, they would uh they would stand on the side and they would watch all their their children, their little their they would watch them around the village while they're dancing or while they're on the village and they would just dance in one spot. So that's what she's going to be doing. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next, we're going to have dance, and this is a uh, Omaha dance. And then these guys here, they, they're kind of called like tail dancers, and they would they would uh, dance like the grass, and they would dance for four days before any ceremony dance would happen, and they would bless the ground so that uh, we have nice weather, and then uh, no fights or no arguments. Everything will be good. No, no animosity. Everything would be good to everybody that. What we're doing in this uh, everyday life to enjoy one another, and that way, uh, good wellness and good good health and happiness would, would happen. That's what these uh, dancers represent. So he's gonna dance like the how the grass sways like that. He's gonna dance like that. But I'm gonna explain his outfit here. Then on on the front, you see that everything that he has is like grass, and then uh, he don't wear no bustle feathers on the sides or nothing. He just Dance grass, and he's gonna bless the grounds. And he has a stick down on the side there, has the feathers, and that's kind of like what the tail dancers. They would go by the drum and kind of, kind of hit, kind of flash it towards them, and they would kind of like, uh, kind of like bless the drum, and and, and they would war hoop, and and that way good thing would happen, scare all the bad spirits away, and it would be nothing but awesome, good fun times. Then uh, Roach he has on is a porcupine and uh, uh, deer hair Roach. And then all the regalia that has on is uh, our family designs, and family colors, ho chunk designs. So, and then uh, turn around. He has nothing on his back, all oh, nothing but like grass. So he's gonna dance like the like the grass dancers, and they usually wear loud bells. Those are they, those are the things that scare away the uh, all the all the spirits. And then uh, and then uh, back in the day, we didn't have bells. They would use uh, buffalo uh, uh, shells. And they would use little shells from their hooves. And they would they would put a lot of them on, and that, that's how how they would do that. Do the things, and they put tobacco on, sing songs, put food up, so that way everything will work out good for their powwow. So he's gonna do the grass dance. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Festival. I hope you all enjoy yourselves. And next we have is the jingle dress dance, the women's jingle dress. And this one here, they uh, wear um, uh, shells, metal shells around their around their waist, all the way down to their to their knees. And then um, this is they wear a real beautiful dress, and they wear all their family designs and colors. This dance comes from the from the Ojibwe Anishinaabe people. And then uh, there are some stories told to uh, to my to my dad. And then they, they allowed, they told those stories to my dad and then they gave him permission to even uh, give this dance away to, to allow it to it. But you gotta do it in the right way, our Indian ways. And then do that, but uh, there's this uh, uh, relative, a Jubilee relative of White Fish Bay. And she had, uh, she had a dream about, about one of her grandbabies being sick. And they took him to the doctors, took him all to everybody to, to get well. But nobody, she wasn't getting healed. So, so uh, through all that, then uh, that dream, and they made this dress, and they, and then uh, they had this, uh, these uh, four ladies dance around this, uh, this uh, child. When they danced around, around the, the child, and then, the, and then the baby got, got well. And then they dressed the baby up. And, uh, they put a jingle dress on her, and then from there, that's where jingle dress started as a medicine dress. And then around our Apollo circle. The, the, um, the natives, when somebody hear about somebody getting sick, they have all the women dress up in their jingle dress and they dance and then they and they do do this uh, song called the uh, jingle dress round dance. But she's gonna show you two different dances: a straight song, and after that, she's gonna show you the the uh, Jubilee round dance. And then this is her regalia here. She wears carries the fan, the, uh, the eagle fan. And uh, some some uh, the old Jubilees didn't carry it back in the day, but but uh, kind of like some tribes they, they they use that for fan for protection. And then she wears the leggings, uh, the, the kind of like the family designs. Also, they match her dress and and then all all beadwork and the moccasins and the belt and and the, even the feather in their hair when she got an Indian name and it was given to her. So she carries that with the prayers with the that were said for her. So her name is uh, Jacqueline Celeste Cleveland, and she has Down syndrome. So, and then uh, she's the uh, the United States made her the uh, Down syndrome princess of, of Native America for life. So she's uh, gonna do the uh, jingle dress dance. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Fancy war dance, and these are the warriors we used to send into the uh, war right off the bat when we're when they're younger, when they're little boys, all the way elder, and they did they um, first ones that are sent to war, and, uh, and these ones here, they have a lot of uh, shields on and, and all that. But I'll be explaining it while he stands right here. So, and this this one here is the uh, front. They used to wear like bones in the front. And on the bottom, and uh, even on the, on the ankles, they would wear a uh, rawhide around their ankles, and then uh, and then they would dress as whatever the season would it be. And then they would uh, try to camouflage themselves with with their with their different regalias. They have a lot of different regalias, and they would they would do that, and then uh, <clears throat> and then they would do, do all that. From there, then they would go to war. So that on the side of their arms, and they have shields. On on their arms, you notice on their on their arms and even on their on their on their wrist, they have uh they would usually wear uh, rawhide, but nowadays we use beadwork and then we trade for that. Then he has a uh, roach on his head, and then they have the two feathers on top of his head. Nose rippers. That he's a young warrior, so I'll turn around. And then uh, on his back, then he has uh, two shields. Back in the day, they would they would uh, put horse hair on him on these uh, branches, and then just, that's what these uh, shields represent, like those branches. And then uh, they would, uh, sh when they shoot the arrows, and then uh, the horse hair wouldn't be able to go through, or buffalo hair, whatever they put on there. So nowadays we use like, kind of, uh, as we do competition. So nowadays we kind of use, kind of get flashier and faster and all that. But these are young, fast, uh, fancy war dancers. So he's gonna do the war dance. <laughs> Like that. I hope you all like that. We got about four minutes left. Next, we're going to do the shield dance. And then, uh, and there's here back in the old days, the tribes, they were losing a lot of people going to war. So the chiefs got together and they, they decided to uh, get their best warrior together, each tribe. And then uh, the, all the disputes that they had, and uh, the winner that's uh, still standing up would be the winner. So that's how they would settle the dispute. So we're going to do the shield dance. We only got a couple minutes, so thank you guys for allowing us to be on here and choosing us as your opening, and hope you all enjoyed that. And this is just a brief uh, thing of our dances and our show. So uh, um, we're, we're online uh, station singers and dancers. 
in our in our um, name is Bear Clan Singers and Dancers of LLC. So we're gonna do the shield dance. here from, from Wisconsin and we originated all the way out to Pennsylvania, all the way to Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, uh, all over, all the way up to Minnesota, down to Missouri, back up to Illinois. So I just let you know where we originated. So thank you. Have a good day.